What up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Nigerian Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Schultz. Today, we're going to give you some MCU news. Blade, Werewolf by Night, the possible replacement for Mr. Uh, General Ross, Mr. Uh, R.I.P. William Hurt. Um, and I think, Brian, I don't know if you had, I think you hoped for this to be the case. And it is the case. Waldron is writing, is writing a, a Secret Wars. Blade update. Brian, in our last conversation when we talked about Blade, we said you, we, this needs to start from scratch. And so they're doing that. And, that, and you also said, I wouldn't be surprised if they uh, push this back. And they have done so as well. It's as if we work at the MCU. <laughs> what do you think, Brian? Blade update. This was inevitable. It's the only right decision they could have made. If if they, if, as I said, if they had tried to force this through on time, I don't see any way the movie would have worked. So, sounds like we are. It sounds like. I mean. They, they just crumpled everything up and threw the trash. <laughs> so every rumor you've heard to date. Now, some of those ideas might carry, but period piece, what we heard. Even, even how it. the characters written, even how the, even how Eric, it's Eric Brooks, I think, says this, even how Eric Brooks is written appears. I think everything's back up for debate. They brought in a new writer. So basically they had the old Watchmen writer. Um, she's done so mm -hmm, kind of like mm -hmm. Coda Mayo who's worked on a couple of shows notable shows including for them he's in to rewrite from scratch a brand new script mm. that I mean it's going to have to get past both Mersh Ali and Kevin Feige it sounds like to get off the ground um, and you know a couple of a couple of director names being kicked around including a deal in Bilal they are that's one of the rumored Sure. That's oh, wow. one of the rumor K, which I, I had put out there as the yeah. bad, uh, bad Boys for Life and Batgirl and Miss Marvel directors as some people that would be in the family. I do think this is going to be people who are at least somewhat familiar with the MCU in some capacity. So I think that's a keep it close to home. But yeah, no, all the shoots, uh, Cleveland, Atlanta, all the locations that had basically gone out with casting calls, they all got pulled. Production calendars were shelved. I mean, I don't see this movie is supposed to come out November of next year. This is a 2024 release now at the earliest. Yeah. Yeah. yeah um, I was going to say something about. Um, oh, I got to reach back out to my sources and see what's new. I, I, it's too soon right now. It's too because they're, they're writing this stuff. So I have no idea. But I do hope that they keep some of the elements that were discussed previously um and that is going back to the origin of blade because that's in the 1920s or 30s or something like that is a very interesting uh backstory so i hope they do keep it just to make it different than because i think the only way this is gonna really work is to make it it's hard to get away from what uh the original blade movies did it's hard to get away from some of the actions you use the fighting, but you can make it look different. You can make it, you can make those things look different, but his backstory, um, just to give us a little bit more insight to the character, I think is something that I hope that they keep for, um, the next movie. Um, what well, by night, Brian, what's the update on that? So I would say two things. So number one is Kevin Feige dropping the nugget that Werewolf by Night is going to be a major factor in the future of the MCU mm -hmm. in some way, which I don't know if you read that as I read that, but I read that as monsters. I read that as something monster related and thematic being part of the stories they want to tell. I don't, I don't read that as we're going to be shooting a bunch of black and white 1930s inspired i don't read it i read it as the types of characters the, the subgenre that's being introduced in this special is going to be carried forward which is a di little different angle that, that they're going to add so that was number one 
Number two, Michael Giacchino saying he was surprised at how much gore he was allowed to put in this and that nobody at any point attempted to stop, <laughs> to stop him. <laughs> Interesting. Interesting. This is, Brian, what perhaps Scott Derrickson was looking for in his Doctor Strange film that Disney was like, no, we can't do this. And they parted ways. I wonder how he feels about this uh, uh, story in terms of what this is going to show. Um, but yeah, he's definitely, Kevin is, is definitely trying to do different things. And this one is something that apparently seems to be hitting. And when that happens, you got to keep going. And let's see. Um, let's see, Brian, because this world of night has a lot of people talking. And again, this is a, something that I think a lot of families uh, will enjoy. Certainly not kitties, but certainly the family, uh, you know, um, sit around and watch uh, World of by Night. Uh, I'm, I'm, again, I'm pretty excited to see this. So given that there were rumors at one point that Blade was in this special, if this hits, any chance that Kevin Feige's also teasing that the new, since Blade has been torn up and is being reincarnated as a totally new idea, any chance that maybe that's what part of what he's referring to is that something in this special creature wise or I don't know, location or theme wise will get carried forward into the new Blade that they're creating? I gotta wait. We gotta wait to see because he's more from. I, I'm not. Listen, I'm not gonna. The only, um, my only, uh, I, I would say, knowledge of the character is he fights vampires. It's a day walk. He's not even a. He's not even a day walker in the comics until some until way after. Yeah. So it'll be interesting to see that aspect of it, Brian, if they go that route. Um, but for me, he's always been vampires. This is dealing with a little bit more. Perhaps these different things will probably lead to probably Midnight Sun, maybe? I don't know. So that, I think, is maybe... That could be definitely a, a feature of what Kevin's talking about. I'm just wondering that it's... A, they obviously, in their original plan, the Blade script would have been wrapped and they were going to shoot a couple of weeks after this special went to air. And I'm just asking the question of if this special comes out and it remains critically acclaimed and it gets people buzzing and there's a reaction to it, that is going to occur at a time where they have a blank slate when it, as it pertains to Blade. So that's why I'm just asking the question, could there be now some connectivity between the two projects that before would not have happened? But maybe they just say, hey, the audience really responded to X, Y, and Z in the special maybe do they carry a little bit of that into the new version that's why i'm asking the question because it's like yeah. a, a rare instance where you've got a feature film that's been wiped clean and then this totally different but you could argue whether it's monsters whether it's the horror aspect there are aspects where i could see that blade as a character could connect or the world of blade could connect the world of werewolf by night if they if they wanted to yeah. But I agree with you. Midnight Sun is coming. I mean, it's coming. I mean, we. we yeah, that, yeah. I mean, the trade. It's one of the trademarks, right? So we we kind of know that it's like they 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 want to get there at some point. Yeah. Harrison Ford has been rumored to be tapped to play General Thunderbolt Ross. Brian. You already know what I'm thinking. No. Yeah, I agree. It's Harrison Ford. That's not Thunderbolt's Ross to me. That's Harrison Ford. And he's mad old. Uh, you know, it's, it's not to say. Yeah, and it's like, come on. How long? 
This will probably be the, the character that gets recast the most. Because the dude is old. <laughs> he got like he's a also two... <laughs> really ornery. Like he's really prickly. Like you know, like he's he's got like this. Everyone loves Harrison Ford, but like he's not easy to work with. Like that's very clear. Harrison Ford is the type of dude you say hello, Mr. Ford, but not the type of dude that you hang out and get on his bad side because you did something crazy. You know what I'm saying? So. <sighs> Yeah, I'm not, I'm not I'm not too happy with the choice, uh, but it's whatever, you know. I, I'm, yeah. So the rumor the rumor is they were going to announce it at D23, and Kathleen Kennedy blocked it because she didn't want it to upstage the Indiana Jones Five. Which is a smart move. Smart move, but it's sort of like a little bit of a window into Disney politics of like franchise on franchise crime, you know, at, the, <laughs> at their flagship event, you know. But but yeah, I'm with you. I think Harrison Ford at 81, 82, whenever this movie is going to come out. He doesn't strike the balance that I think Ross needs to, which is Harrison Ford is a little too earnest. He's a little too rugged hero. I think we saw him actually, I don't know how many people saw Ender's Game, but we saw him in Ender's Game try to be like this older general with sort of questionable morals, and it didn't really work, quite honestly. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the thing. It's like, you see, this is Brian. I keep saying this over and over again. I say it over and over again because not a lot of you are listening to the show, so I keep on saying it over and over again. But stop going to the well and getting these big stars to play your roles. There are over a billion people on Earth. You can't tell me you can't find one person to play Thunderbolt Ross. It doesn't have to be Harrison Ford. It doesn't have to be. Get Scott Lang, maybe. Not Scott Lang. Uh, what's this guy? Lang, Lang. Stephen Lang. Get somebody else. Get somebody else. Yeah, get yeah, somebody see, else. You, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. So Stephen Lang is a great call. I gave you Ed Harris as well, uh, who's 10 years younger. Yeah. See, these, these, He's are, always see, good, these yeah. are guys. But see, these are guys who, if you look at their parts, the way they inhabit their roles, you need a guy who has got a sinister side. You have, Thunderbolt Ross has an intensity and a dark side, but he also does love his country <laughs> and he will defend it at all costs. So like there's a, there's a patriotism married with a little bit of, you know, obsession. He'll get, a little un, he'll get a little underhanded and obsessive to get the job done, which, which makes him obviously well-suited to coach a mix of anti-heroes, villains, and criminals into a team. Like Harrison Ford is too, he's too good, man. That's it. Like it yeah. just doesn't. But you're right. I think the casting is all about one of Kevin Feige's flaws right now, which is because he because everyone will take his call. He is he... leaning into, <laughs> you know, a little bit of the little bit of the star seduction going on oh yeah hell's you know? yeah and and that's hell's not yeah. oh that's not necessarily going to lead to the best results the only call he seems not to be wanting to pick up is the rocks call i'm pretty sure the because it was a long time ago eh, that the the rock said we're gonna uh, my people's gonna get in touch with their people he said something like that i think i'm quoting him verbatim and I'm pretty sure that MCU people, they see that number and they see it's The Rock. Hopefully they're screening calls and they know that it's him. They're like, nah, I like our freedom. It's going to be interesting. But Harrison Ford is not the right choice for him. When I, saw, when I heard that, I was like, yeah, he's, he, it's like Kevin Feige has gone away from what made the MCU and is lost in the celebrity. Now yep. my friends are these people and I can talk to them. I can get whoever I want to be in these characters yeah. and I'm gonna get the big stars. That's I'm, what the I, 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 I think that's what's happening to him. Yeah. Char Charlize I, Theron, come on, man. Go ahead. Yeah, I mean, Brett Goldstein, Harry Styles. I mean, and those scenes are 
the scenes are only there to show you that the MCU has those actors or actresses involved. They don't, yeah. as we said, they don't go anywhere. They're just yeah. there to be like, look, here they are in costume. And yeah. that's the thing with Thunderbolt Ross. He, the other issue I have with Harrison Ford at his, this stage of his career and, you know, look, I mean, I'm a huge Harrison Ford fan. He, he basically has been in my, my entire life. <laughs> yeah. Harrison Ford has been a star. And he's yeah, probably yeah. given me as many entertaining classics as any actor or actress a lot. But part of what Ross has to do in the MCU is he's got to pop up here and there. He's got to show up the way William Hurt did in Civil War. Is Harrison Ford really doing that in his 80s? Is he coming in for a couple of days to give you everything he's got for one two-minute scene? Yeah. I just think he's beyond it. That is crazy. And he doesn't need though. it. I just is is I, I don't see how this is going to work. And I don't think if he does take the role, I don't think the performance is going to for that character Ross is going to shine through. Yeah, I agree. Um. Next, we were talking about quite some time ago. I'll say like a month ago, a few weeks ago about the possibilities of uh, Ryan Coogler directing Secret Wars. That still has not been finalized. Uh, but what has been finalized as of today is uh, Waldron is going to be writing Secret Wars. Now, Waldron wrote the hell out of Loki. And he's also a writer on um, the animated show. Rick and Morty. Very popular. Rick, I haven't seen. Way, I haven't Rick, watched it. Rick and Morty. Rick and Morty is like all over the MCU because Waldron's from Rick and Morty. Uh, Jeff Loveness, who's writing Kang Dynasty, is from Rick and Morty. Jessica Gao, She Hulk creator, Rick and Morty. Wow. Like I don't know what it is with this show, but like MCU is just like picking their writers' room over and over again. Anyway, Waldron also wrote Doctor Strange two, although we don't know exactly where the Waldron script ends and the final script begins because as we know that movie was redone reshot two directors so he owned it in the in the press tour and he never you know he was a good soldier about it but it i don't know that we totally know how much of doc strange 2 is his and how much is not yeah 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 but brian um one of the things that i've said about secret wars is the there's a lot of characters you got to deal with mm -hmm. in a different situation. And these are, and these are not small characters. These are big characters. You you're, you're talking about picking your team. I don't know. I, listen, I'm talking about from a secret war storyline that I read. I don't know how much that storyline has changed, but they still involve big name characters and in a not so uh, pleasant situation. So, Brian, you have to get somebody that's going to write the hell out of this to make it a compelling film. And we try to avoid Street Fighter. We try to avoid Mortal Kombat. So we try you to avoid all those things. Oh, I hate it. <laughs> As it, so, Brian, so many strings on this show. <laughs> Brian, I was traumatized by Street Fighter. I wanted that Street Fighter movie to be so dope. And we got the the the, the, the horrendousness of that movie is just ridiculous. It wasn't you awful. Talk it wasn't it was an awful movie. I'm not trying to defend it. So, yeah. I think I think the word goofy, when I think about goofy, I think about Street Fighter. That's where it derived from me, but they got they got somebody that um, who's a great writer, Brian. Um, I'm sure, Brian, that this gives you a lot of hopes for the movie. Um, what do you think about this development? I like it. I think it's there's some some really nice symmetry here. So, Michael Waldron obviously wrote. Kang's introduction to the MCU. So and he wrote Loki, but that included Jonathan Major's first appearance and an epic season finale. So I like the idea 
that the guy who wrote his entrance will write presumably his exit. I think that's cool. That is the highest probability of success to me. It's as somebody who had an idea and a vision maybe for where this character could go. In between that, I don't think it's a coincidence that Jeff Loveness, who is the writer of Quantumania, is writing Kang Dynasty. Don't tell me these are accidents. Mm. Like there's a continuity here of these two guys and the, and the stories that I think are most connected. Like you can make an argument that like the seed planted in Loki is going to be brought full circle somehow in Secret Wars. And obviously I think we both have high expectations for quantum media, but I think that's going to set up and lead us into Kang Dynasty in yeah. some sense. So I think it's it, Marvel's not messing around in the way that Marcus and McFeely did, you know, started with um, Captain America and then wound up doing Infinity War and Endgame with the Russos as they as they kind of had success. I think Marvel's going to the same well a little bit here. So mm. I I like it. Uh, I like I like the potential. It's a huge challenge. We, it also feeds into we knew Kevin Feige was going to keep this in the family. It's also why I still think Ryan Coogler was the first choice to direct Secret Wars because they just want all familiar hands on deck for Kang Dynasty and Secret Wars because they are going, you know, you said you don't, they don't, you know, you said like you're trying to avoid Street Fighter. I think their version is <laughs> we want to beat Endgame, which is they, a, I don't call order. I personally think they won't do it. I think like you only get to do that first time once. So I kind of think it'll be hard to go 3 billion global on Secret Wars, but I guarantee you that that is the bar they're setting internally. Yes. For those films. Given the amount of talent so far that is attached to Secret Wars puts me in a place where I am not a hundred percent, but I'm I'm leaning towards the actual possibility of outdoing those movies, especially like Endgame. When you get Brian Coogler and his mastery of emotion, uh, Waldron writing crazy things and making it all make sense. I think this is develop developing into uh, something that is going to be paid very close attention to by Kevin Feige because, and, and the parliament, because they understand this cannot fail. And, and I, I know I say this a lot, this movie can't fail. Yeah, these movies can't fail. But given the state of the MCU now, where in the past you could afford to fail, you could have, Thor Love and Thunder was horrendous. Um, a bunch of other movies weren't that great. Well, it'd be like when Dark I'm, World wasn't good. Dark World wasn't yeah. good. They survived. Yeah, what, what, which one did I say? Thor, Love, and Thunder? Which, which yeah, one meant, did I say? I think you meant Dark World, the second one. Yes, 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 yes. Dark yeah. World. Did I say Thor, Love, and Thunder? Yeah, that's the most recent ah. one. So I'm like, yeah. Um, tells you where Thor, Love, and Thunder and, 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 and Dark World land for me. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not arguing with that point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So all these things, Brian, the, this... These movies, these titles, Fantastic Four, X-Men, Mutants, these movies can't be Dark World. They can't be Thor, Love, and Thunder. They can't even be Doc Strange 2. That's what I mean by um, they can't fail. Because for me, those movies are failures. Final words, Brian. So how do you how do you get to that level and what's what are the what's the work that needs to be done? So number one is I do think, look, I mean, you're right. And if we're right, if Ryan Kugler does take this and believes he can, and I think he's only gonna do it if he truly emotionally believes he can make it happen. But if that's true, if he gets to that spot and Wakanda Forever is the success we think it can be, 
there's no question he's worth it. He's worth a couple hundred million dollars of box office on his name alone on that movie relative to anyone else who's directing an MCU film today, hands down. Number two, I think this is actually probably the grand experiment. We've talked about it. Jonathan Majors. If he keeps going on the up and up, if he delivers in Ant-Man 3, if he delivers in Kang Dynasty, think about it. You've never seen a villain. We, we talk about Marvel villain problems all the time. And when we've gotten a few good ones, they're out in one film. Yeah. Imagine if Heath Ledger had survived and he had come back to do Dark Knight Rises. Imagine the hype that's around, that would have been around that film off of the performance in The Dark Knight. That is the bar I think Jonathan Majors is going for. And if he succeeds, now you're talking about someone who's in the Darth Vader conversation, someone who was in multiple projects where he became a transcendent villain and he carried the hype as much as the heroes did. Marvel's never tried that, right? Josh Brolin was really only the centerpiece of one movie. Like even in Endgame, if you break it down, he's not in the movie that much. He's no. in an Infinity War. Is Infinity War was his joint. So, so even though he survived across multiple films, he was not featured in the way that Majors is going to be featured. So that is the second element. He can build several hundred million of hype behind himself if everyone's like, the next, when's this guy on screen next? What's he going to do next to the heroes? Which brings us to the elephant in the room. It's the heroes that got to pick up the game. For this to be to have a shot at the end game title and go for 3 billion global. This crew of characters who's gonna be in the new Avengers, we need a subset of those characters to get, to at least go after. They can't get to RGJ level probably, but they at least gotta get to Chris Evans level. They at least gotta get to a level, you know, get to Scarlett Johansson level. They have to get to a level where you're super excited to see what they're going to do next. And we, like, other than maybe like Florence Pugh, I'm probably forgetting one. We don't have a ton of those right now. We don't have a ton of them. We're yeah. like dying to know what they're going to do next. This guy, there's a lot of potential. You know, a lot of characters with potential, a lot of good actors in here. One but, last thing. What, what, yeah, what, 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 that feels to be like that's the Achilles heel right now, is the Avengers lineup is the Achilles heel. That's what I wanted to ask you. I don't feel confident in the current lineup that we have. And I would probably feel a certain way, Brian, if in Secret Wars, Avengers Secret Wars, we have Fantastic Four. Are these characters, has Fantastic Four been a part of the Avengers? Or they've always been Fantastic Four they're on their own entity? No, I, no, no, I think they're in Secret Wars. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But yeah. have they ever I been Avengers? Gonna, oh, I think, I think, yeah, I think, I think the Fantastic Four and Reed Richards are going to be in Secret Wars. I mean, I think Marvel has to. That's one of the reasons Marvel has to get that right. Is like they need those. For that well, uh, have they ever been Avengers? Uh yeah, I think so. They've certainly yeah. worked with them. Are you saying like have they been called Avengers? I don't know. I mean, they've certainly been in storylines with like alongside. Um, alongside. Avengers. I just want to, I, I'm just trying to, you know, the Avengers has always been a, a, an elite group. For me, and I'm sorry to say, anybody can be an Avenger now. Just by some dude saying, oh, you're an Avenger. Yeah, I hear you. Shang-Chi's an Avenger and, 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 his, and his friend, right? She's an Avenger. That's the way they, they left it off. Welcome to the Avengers. So Shang-Chi and the funny girl is an Avenger. 80, yeah. Those things bother me, Brian, when anybody can just be an Avenger. Anyway. Yeah, I hear you. I mean, like, and there's been talk that, you know, Shang-Chi would get the Captain America role in the team, you know, that leadership role. He hasn't earned it yet. I do think when we talk about the Avengers lineup, this is where, this is, I'm telling you, this is where Chadwick's passing really hurts. Because that was, 
the leader. That was the centerpiece holdover from the last go around where there was still going to be more story told and it was still going to be that much more compelling. And I think it, it, it's a big one to fill, like not having him on the board for many reasons. But I think when we talk about an Avengers lineup, like it, you can just see the, the Chad with both in the size hole right now in that, in that roster. I'm guessing that for that, um, we'll get a Black Panther in there. I don't think oh, it'll yeah, be Shuri. Yeah, yeah. But I just think in terms of fan approval and hype yeah, yeah, building yeah. into Secret Wars, you needed a few good holdovers. And like he was probably the number, he would have been my number one draft pick for yeah, yeah. You know, the downy of this next generation. And not to get off part, off topic, but in that regard, Brian, in the comics, Black Panther is super smart. Yep. In the movies, he wasn't, I mean, not to say that it was dumb, obviously not, but he wasn't the brains of the family. Yeah, sure, he's the, the genius of the of the sibling. Yeah. Um, but let's see what happens. There's a lot to discuss till we actually see it. Wow, I can't, I can't even imagine the first trade of Secret Wars when we first see it. <laughs> that just gonna be crazy. Um, but things are shaping up, Brian. We, I, can, I think we can both agree that things are shaping up and things have, uh, th there seems to be some promise and the people that are involved with Secret Wars. I'm pretty sure Kevin Feige is very, is going to be very hands on in the parliament, and they they and, and I'm pretty sure they they know that this cannot be subpar. This can't be freaking Age of Ultra, even Brian. Nope. It can't be like it was okay. If it's if it's okay, is whack. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's like going to Wolf Gang Steakhouse and saying it's okay. Yeah, what? That's what I said like. I think this needs to be, you know, as I said, three billion. I mean, you're setting the bar awfully high, but it's got to be above two. It's got to be above two. Yeah, that to me is like the doubt. Like if this thing drifts down, we're like, what kind of forever outboxes Secret Wars? <laughs> like, like that. Like as good as what kind of forever may be, like that should not really happen. That should not happen from a scale perspective. Of right? course, of course. So, yeah. Although I got. As a side note, I mean, I don't want to get too far on a tangent. I sent this to you. Man, they re-released Avatar. That thing's already made like $40, $50 million. I'm like, I'm telling you, man, like everyone's doubting this guy. And I'm like, I think this thing's going to, I think the sequel is going to do $2 billion plus again. And I'm like, I don't know how, but like people just, you can watch that movie at home. You just stream it for free. And people are like, 3D IMAX, I'm in. 13, like. 13 years later, I'll go see it. I'll tell you, Jim Cameron makes money. Yeah, that yeah, guy, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was a, he's the biggest, maybe the biggest a-hole, <laughs> like legend director, but man, that guy's money. I, I think that, yeah, anyway. Guys like him want what they want and get what they want and, and get what they, uh, what they deserve and what they think they deserve. I, you heard about that. Um, there was something that they asked him he wanted yeah. a million. He said, "Titanic paid for this one. <laughs> yeah, pay exactly. for this movie." <laughs> yeah, he basically unzipped his pants in front of them. And was like, "Y'all are here because of me." What? <laughs> hey, yo! Did, some, right? like, sometimes you gotta say it, Brian. Sometimes you gotta tell the truth, no matter how hard you know it, who it, the it hell I swallow. am. That's pretty much what That's, he did. These these are one of the times you pull that out. Some people overuse it. Like in the store, in the you know what I'm saying? But this dude is using it in the executive room. You know who I am? So anyway, that's our show for today. A um, lot of updates. Um, there'll be a lot more. It's funny, we haven't even talked about the WB today other than the few mentions of uh, the other guy in our Black Panther show, but um those will certainly come down the pike we'll be talking about those 
for quite some time as well, because there is a lot of rebuilding to do over there. WB looks like the, the end scene in Man of Steel. And it's still getting rebuilt. You, Can you, you I was, <laughs> WB's wearing a Metropolis jersey. <laughs> Yo, I was talking to a dude that got hired, to, that, that started working today, and he was talking about Man of Steel. Man, man he was tearing it up. He was tearing it up. And I, I was think it's just, that bad, but that's all right. Yeah. Anyway, uh, let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of uh, uh, what was it that we were talking about? Um, Secret Wars, Walden Wright Knit. Yeah. yeah. Blade, the Blade situation, that's huge. Yep. Um, I've thought about what is Mahershala Ali thinking. I think he understands how big this movie is and he's going to stick around to see what the script is going to be, but we can't have any more delays or else this movie is going to be shelved, which would be a first, I think, Brian, for the MCU to shelve a movie. That'd be a black eye if that happened. Yeah. yeah. Well, over my night, very excited for that. How is it for not excited for at all? Like, if I was in the room, I'd be like, what? He's 80 years old, and no. You know, find somebody else. And uh, the very exciting news about Walden writing Secret Wars, the dude is hot right now. Hopefully, he doesn't get lost from the sauce and the celebrity and says, I can write anything, Peter Bunner and Jelly. It sounds dope, right? Oh, yeah. No, I, was, I, would, put, I would give him a poster that has the word cameos crossed <laughs> out. <laughs> <laughs> word up um but yeah uh, a lot of news for the mcu um let us know in the conversation below what you guys think and we'll see you next time on the jerry report